In Britain, American immigrant Ian lives a pretty average life. He plays for a successful hockey team, although today they aren't doing so well. The referee keeps making decisions against Ian's team, finishing the game earlier and costing them the match. After the game is over, Ian's teammates aren't very friendly toward him, and Ian feels betrayed. Fortunately he has his girlfriend Jenny who immediately comes over to comfort him and they leave home together. On their way out, Ian notices the board's clock is still stuck on the game time. When they make it to Jenny's home, Ian confesses he feels something has been wrong all day and mentions the clock. Jenny comforts him again and they begin sharing kisses, but at that moment her parents appear at the window to demand her to come inside. Afterward, Ian notices how creepy the neighborhood is and quickly drives away. Minutes later, he has to stop the car when he finds the road blocked by a figure on the ground. Ian waits for a few seconds but nothing happens, so he goes to check on the being under the rain. As soon as he touches it, the figure shakes and startles Ian, who immediately runs back to his car. He tries to call emergencies to no avail, and when he looks up, he realizes the figure is gone from the road. Suddenly, a terrifying black monster breaks through the window with its claw and grabs Ian to throw him onto the ground. Then it drags the boy to the train rails and holds him there until the train comes to run over him. At that moment, Ian wakes up and finds himself inside an office, looking older. A phone rings, and Ian picks it up only to hear the person on the other side hang up. He's disorientated for a few seconds, but soon his boss reminds him he needs those spreadsheets, and Ian quickly goes back to work. At some point his co-worker Jenny comes to drop more paperwork for him to do, and she says she isn't looking to the weekend because her family will scold her for still being single and not having kids. Hours pass with Ian working and at the end of the day, he's ready to go home. On his way out, a man runs to join him at the elevator, and Ian notices how sweaty and nervous he looks. When they make it to the first floor, the man runs out as if in fear, bumping into a bunch of boxes. Once outside, Ian discovers the man from the elevator has fallen under some sort of illness attack, and among the crowd checking on him, there's a man that looks familiar. For a second Ian swears that there are black veins where the guy is touching the sick employee and the man's face suddenly gets blurry, but Ian blames it on his imagination and leaves. When he gets home, Ian gets something strong to drink and watches the street, where he notices strange shadows in the neighboring building. He's suddenly startled by his wife Medea, who quickly brings him to the room to get frisky together. After sharing a passionate moment, Medea can tell Ian's distracted, so he shares that he saw a co-worker die and that the other stranger reminded him of his old hockey referee. Medea is surprised to hear Ian used to play hockey, and Ian could have sworn he already told her, so he goes looking for his yearbook to prove it. However when he finds the team picture, he's upset to discover he isn't on it. Ian begins having an emotional crisis because he has memories that didn't actually happen, but Medea comforts him with ice cream and gets him to calm down. While failing to fall asleep, Ian hears a voice saying he knows, it's too late, as a shadow runs outside the window and then onto his wall. Ian goes downstairs to check, but he finds nothing. The next day, Ian oversleeps and takes the bus to work instead of walking. During the ride, he discovers his watch has stopped, and two guys get on the bus that look a lot like his old hockey teammates. The duo gets off as soon as they see him, and Ian rushes to follow them, but the guys give him the finger before disappearing. As Ian runs down the street, he bumps into Gray, who knows Ian by name and tells him they need to go somewhere safe. After noticing another man looking at him creepily, Ian accepts to follow Gray into an alley. Gray points out that Ian's watch has stopped and explains that means they are coming. He doesn't explain who they are, but he says they're hunting Ian and they were the ones that pushed him into a new reality. Gray knows all the details of both lives, swearing they're all real, and explains that if Ian dies again, he'll just be pushed into another alternate life and they'll keep murdering him every day. Furious at the lack of proper information, Ian pushes Gray against the wall, and suddenly the black creature from the previous day comes out of a hole and pulls Gray inside. Ian immediately runs away and bumps into a man with black holes for eyes, but things go back to normal when he blinks. His cell phone won't work, so Ian tries a public phone, but the only noise he hears is creepy static. Then Ian runs again and makes it back to his apartment, where he tells Medea that someone is trying to kill him. Suddenly he hears a noise, and when he looks downstairs, he notices a shadow approaching. Terrified, Ian quickly locks up the door and steps back, bumping into Medea. At that moment a splash of blood appears on the door, and Ian looks down to realize Medea has stabbed him with her claw because she's one of them too. She kisses him before dropping him on the floor, saying he shouldn't have remembered before cutting his throat open. At that moment Ian wakes up inside a car, almost crashing against a truck if it wasn't for the warning of his passenger. It turns out that in this life Ian is a taxi driver, and Jenny is currently using his service. Ian apologizes for the distraction and they get to chat, making Ian feel deja vu when Jenny tells the story of his family pressuring her to get married. When they arrive at Jenny's family home, she offers Ian to come in, but since he doesn't think it's appropriate, Jenny at least convinces him to wait for a coffee. While Ian waits, he sees a mysterious man walk by. Then he begins noticing creepy shadows on the neighbor's windows. Suddenly someone touches him from behind and Ian jumps only to notice is Jenny. Feeling creeped out, Ian gets in his car and notices the clock has stopped. After grabbing the coffee he drives away, 
and when he makes it downtown, he finds Gray waving at him. Ian immediately stops the car and goes looking for him with a wrench in his hands, getting upset when he realizes he knows Gray but he doesn't know from where. Gray touches Ian to give him a few flashes of his previous lives and tells him they are coming, so he must protect Jenny or she'll get hurt too. Suddenly Ian hears a noise and turns around, which gives Gray the chance to disappear. At that moment another black monster appears on a roof and jumps on top of Ian, killing him. This time Ian wakes up inside an employment agency and he remembers his past lives clearly. Before he can look for clues, Jenny shows up, and in this life she's trying to help him find a job. Ian plays along but Jenny notices he's nervous, so he confesses he's in danger. Jenny doesn't believe him, thinking he's been consuming something illegal again, but at that moment the clock stops. Behind the door, Ian notices the same mysterious guy he's seen during his last two lives but this time he has a black claw as well. Terrified, Ian begins running away, noticing the monster shadow on the stairs and taking the elevator instead. However the beast suddenly breaks through the elevator ceiling, so Ian has to run away again. He bumps into Jenny and tells her she isn't safe, but at that moment, more men appear behind the door, and Ian recognizes them from his past lives too. He immediately takes the fire stairs to go to the parking lot as the men become black shadows that chase him the whole time. Ian eventually makes him to the street, where he manages to get into a taxi right before a creature grabs him. The car barely gets to do a couple of blocks before a beast jumps on top of it and begins stabbing the roof. Ian quickly jumps out of the cab, only to suddenly be hit by a passing vehicle. Bleeding out on the street, Ian is approached by Medea and the two guys, who kill him yet again. The next time he wakes up, Ian is inside a shoddy apartment, where he finds clear indications that he's an addict in this life. There's music playing rather loudly and a neighbor is knocking to complain about it. When Ian opens the door he discovers Jenny lives downstairs and can hear the music too. Ian tries to communicate with her, but she notices the injection on his arm and gets so disturbed that she leaves. Moments later, Jenny opens her apartment door to find Ian trying to get in. Scared, Jenny grabs a knife to defend herself, thinking Ian is a crazy junkie. As Ian tries to make her remember, he falls to the floor because his injection wound is bleeding and making him dizzy. Jenny rushes to the door to ask for help, but Ian immediately closes it as he begins mentioning things from previous lives, including Jenny's family that he isn't supposed to know about. These words make Jenny see a few flashes of memories, but before she can understand what's going on, a monster claw begins destroying the door. Ian pushes Jenny away and notices black veins are beginning to appear on his arm. At that moment the beast breaks through the door, so Ian grabs Jenny and they escape together through the window and take the emergency stairs. When they reach the ground, two monsters surround Ian and he grabs a piece of glass to defend himself, but Medea grabs him from behind first and uses the glass against his own hand. Then she pushes Ian against the wall and is about to hurt him, only for Jenny to strike first by stabbing Medea in the shoulder with her knife. This loosens Medea's grasp and now Ian can run away with Jenny. The duo runs through town and descends into the subway station, where Jenny steals a piece of fabric from a hobo to wrap up Ian's wound. She also admits that she now can remember the previous lives they went through. At that moment the train arrives and the duo gets in, agreeing to stick together until the end. At the next station, a guard comes in as well and watches the duo for a while before getting off at the following stop. There he meets with Medea and her men to give them the information. A few stations later, Jenny is asleep, and Ian turns around to find Grey sitting next to him. Grey is looking very sick, and Ian finally understands Grey is also one of the creatures. They're called harvesters and they feed on people's fear. When an old man gets on the train at the next station, Grey takes his beast form and terrifies him feeding on his fear as the guy runs away. Feeding allows Gray to look healthy again and he explains that feeding on human fear is addictive. Some harvesters have started to kill for it, so they went from parasites to predators. They're after Ian because he managed to hurt them, and they don't want him to remember how otherwise it'll be the end of their race. At that moment Gray reveals Ian used to be a harvester as well, in fact he was the most powerful one. Suddenly they hear a noise and Gray announces they've been found before disappearing. Ian wakes Jenny up and they run out of the train, only to find the way blocked by the two hockey players. The duo runs back where they come from and accidentally bumps into a boy, making him drop his phone. Ian tells him to run, but the boy stops to grab his phone and is jumped on by the harvesters, who immediately hurt him with its claw and feet on his fear. Ian and Jenny keep on running, but they miss the next train. Suddenly a harvester appears and throws Ian against the wall as Medea approaches and explains that Ian is weak because he hasn't been feeding. Then Medea transforms her hand and jumps on the duo to capture them against the wall as Ian's veins begin to go black again. She teases Ian for caring about a human and kisses him, gaining control of his mind. Medea throws Jenny on the floor and releases Ian, whose face is slowly changing into his harvester form. Ian crawls on top of Jenny and starts choking her as Medea tells him to feed on her, but just as he begins absorbing a bit of her fear, Ian notices Jenny's suffering and snaps out of it. He only can do one thing to escape, so he apologizes before pushing Jenny and himself off the platform, this way a train can kill them and send them into another life. When Ian wakes up, this time he finds himself tied to a bed in a mental hospital. 
There are various tormenting devices attached to his body and Ian screams for help. But when Jenny the nurse comes to check on him, an illusion only shows her a man in a coma. After Jenny leaves, Medea appears and shows him an old memory, revealing that Ian killed another harvester and she wants to know how, because it shouldn't be possible. At that moment Medea's men show up as well and take Ian to a surgery room, where Medea begins hurting Ian with poisonous injections that make him pass out. The next time he wakes up, Ian is in the room again, and a child patient is in the bed across from Ian's. Medea reminds him he is weak and needs to feed, but Ian refuses to hurt a child, so the other two harvesters show their real forms to terrify the child and feed on his fear. The kid screams and doctors and nurses come to check on him, but they can't see what's actually going on. Ian passes out again and wakes up later to find Jenny comforting him. After she leaves, tons of memories flood Ian's mind, a mix of his old lives and images of all the torture Medea has been putting him through while he's asleep. When he wakes up this time, Medea is kissing him before disappearing. The one that shows up next is Grey, who looks weak and wrinkly and explains Ian became human when he fell for Jenny. It's his love for the girl that made him strong enough to kill another harvester, and he needs to survive this to protect her because she makes him a better man. Grey used to love a human woman too and he had found a new life in her love, but the harvesters found her and killed her. Since Ian doesn't want to feed from humans, Grey offers himself since he doesn't have much time left anyway. Ian takes his offer and feeds on Grey, causing all his wounds to immediately start healing. Later when Medea's men go to check on Ian, they find the room empty and the artifacts broken. One of the harvesters is distracted by checking the scene and is suddenly stabbed by a monster behind the curtain, which instantly kills him. It's then revealed this is Ian with his powers unleashed, and when the other guy tries to run away, Ian jumps on him and kills him too. Meanwhile Jenny continues to work around the hospital, not noticing the shadows that follow her everywhere. Soon Ian begins following her as well, and whenever a harvester tries to attack Jenny, Ian kills them first. He kills one inside the archive room and another one in the corridors before following Jenny to the morgue. There, some harvesters come out of hiding and try to attack her, but Ian shows up and tells her to run. Then Ian proceeds to kill all his enemies, using the power of love to easily take them out with just a few quick hits. Afterward Ian goes looking for Jenny, only to discover Medea has captured her. When Ian tries to attack her, Medea pushes Jenny away and hits Ian instead, putting him back into his human form as she begins hitting him from reality to reality in quick painful jumps. After going through all of Ian's lives and jumping into the train, they return to the hospital and Medea grabs Jenny again, using her as a shield. Ian realizes there's only one thing to do to stop Medea for good and he proceeds to stab Jenny with his own claw, which goes through and manages to stab Medea as well. As Medea disintegrates, Ian remembers that Grey said finding love gave him a new life. With this knowledge, Ian tells Jenny that he loves her and uses the power of his feelings to heal her wounds. Sometime later, the couple is back to their original lives, and this time, Ian can win his hockey match without the interference of harvesting referees. Jenny comes to congratulate him after the game and Ian thanks her for making him human, but Jenny doesn't understand because she doesn't remember what happened. At that moment Ian sees the mysterious man and follows him into an abandoned corridor, where the man reveals to be a harvester. Ian immediately summons his claw, ready to fight it. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.